So I thought what we would do here from the Grow Canada Conference is showcase a little bit of my discussion with John Herdman. Now, you may, he was the keynote speaker. He opened up the conference this morning, and it was, quite frankly, awesome. If you didn't leave that conversation motivated, then uh, I'm not sure you actually have uh, any emotion in you. And if you don't know the name John Herdman, I won't uh, fault you. You probably are not a soccer fan in Canada. He was the Can- or Canadian women's uh, national coach, uh, famous with uh, earning podiums with Christine Sinclair, one of Canada's greatest female athletes of all time. But now he's coaching the men's program, which is a little has had a little bit less success. That's a bit of an understatement, but he is definitely willing to take on that challenge. Here's my conversation with John Herdman talking about leadership and performance from Grow Canada. How's it going today, John? It's going well. It's going very well. You did a fantastic job up there. Very motivating. It's a real story. It's uh, it's my life. It's it's the experiences I've had in this in this great country now for the last eight years and just a journey through leadership. So let's start with leadership, John. How do you you know as somebody that has led uh, the women's team and now the men's team? How do you define leadership? Uh, getting the best out of yourself every day, uh, being clear about, you know, that it's a process that never stops. And when you stop bringing the best out of yourself, you'll stop bringing the best out of people. So your first job is to, uh, to do the best for you, to ensure you're uh, operating at your, your highest virtues with orate, challenging yourself. And typically by doing that, you'll be modeling the way for others. And then your second job is to invest in those around you and you know, make sure that you're very committed to bringing the best out of those people. A lot of times in the corporate world, people will be like, well, you need, you need to hire the best people. Well, in, in your line of work, Canada doesn't have the best footballers. You know, we, but but it's, it's more than that. And you, you alluded to some of that in your speech. Talk about it. Well, you know, the the technical aspect of the game is always going to be important. Talent is an important element of of, of any craft. But then there's the character element, there's the people element, there's, you know, the the optimism that, you know, people can be more than the the cover of the book. And I think you have to constantly believe that, that when you work with people, there's always more to come. You, you can bring more out of people. People can bring more out of themselves. And then there may be a plateau that p- people can reach. And at that point, then often that's uh, an element around motivation. And again, good leaders find new ways to motivate their, their, their players, their, their colleagues, their spouses. So I'm going to keep it as simple as this, that you know people will always be our best resources. And... I think the great leaders, you know, they can operate with not the superstars, they create rock stars, they create people who show up every day, who can deliver above a line and in competence and character under any circumstance. So yeah. can, can I'll, you, take, I'll take a team of rock stars over superstars any day. Nice. Can, can you talk about the pit? Yeah, the pit is um, something to embrace. It's, it, it's about leaders being ready to to recognize that we've got to be prepared to put ourselves in pits where it's uncomfortable where you're living on the edges at times of your your skill sets where you're vulnerable putting yourself in those vulnerable positions in relationships in in your competency at work that's the pit and and the pits just about growth really it's about Knowing that if we are going to reach that that orator, that highest virtues, that you, you've got to be rubbing against something. You've got to have friction. You, you, you've got to have tests in your life. And I just think people are frightened of pits. And I think the good leaders, they create pits for themselves. They create pits for their people, for their organizations. They purposefully put people in pits. And I think the smart leaders are intuitive to put people in them at the right time as well. It's not about creating chaos in an organization or in an already chaotic time. That is the pit that they'll be dealing with. But ultimately, the pit is about pressure readying teams. It's about having them ready to always be there to respond to adversity, which is always around the corner. If, if you live life 
on that edge. So, you know, for me, a pit is shifting away from wanting that you, you know, hedonistic life of just pleasure without pain. You know, the way I see the world is, I want pleasure through pain, and and that's the most pleasure you can get when you've had to suffer to get something. And you talked about how you put yourself in these pits, and you moved from a situation with the women's team, uh, top four. I think you said top four in the world. Obviously, uh, lots of you know podium positions, World Cup, and uh, in in the Olympics. Moving to the men's team, why? Because the men's team is not exactly. It it, it has a lot of room for growth. So why why make that move? Uh, because of that, I think at the, at the heart of us, I'm a farmer. <laughs> I'm a teacher, I'm a builder, I, I, I enjoy the challenge, I was ready for a challenge. But more importantly that if we fix the men's game in this country, we fix everything. You know, the men's game is the, the one part of our organisation that has, has consistently underperformed um, for, for long periods of time. And in that sense, you know, we've not been able to reap the rewards, financial rewards that would typically raise the uh, raise the tides across the whole organization so other women's teams that have seen success have lived on the back of the financial wealth of successful men's teams who qualify for big tournaments with big financial gains so for us you know the women's team had probably taken themselves in my opinion as far as we could in terms of leaving legacy for a country uh, without the men being successful, we, we were never going to raise the tide and really raise this team up where we could have a professional league in our country or bring more quality to a team that's striving from going from number four in the world to number one. So I think, you know, that's that's the shift. Um, and that's part of making this country better. That's, that's my motivator. Are we getting some of our best athletes into the game of, of soccer in Canada now? It, or is that what it's is that what it's really about? Like, well, I don't think it's always about the best athletes. I think you, you know there's an element of that. I think it's about people who are passionate. It's about people who really want to raise this flag for for the men's team. And you know, I think we we we're raising the profile uh, through some of the results that we've had. We're raising the profile through some of the players we've got now, and we've started. You know, uh, some of the work in the uh, system to bring the shirt to kids on a provincial level to put the Canada Soccer logo, the Maple Leaf, in 12 to 15 year olds' faces so that they know we're here. And when they get asked to go and play for Portugal, because we're a largely immigrant country, young, talented players can play for many countries, that they want to stay for us because they feel a connect to us. Now, clearly, clearly football is important to you. What is it about you've been in Canada for a number of years now? What is it about Canada that uh, you want to take on this, these kinds of challenges? Well, I think Canada are gritty people. I, I've always respected the the grit that you see, and you know we're we're a humble people. We um, we've got good work ethic. We've got good values at the core. So it's easy to get a team moving, or easier to get a team moving in the right direction. And I just feel that, you know, there's something in us that we always want to prove to the rest of the world that, you know, we we can and uh, punch above our weight. So, you know, I've always you know, been drawn to the grittiness of, of Canadian people that when it gets tough, uh, Canadians seem to roll their sleeves up and, yeah. and not roll over. Well, John, I, I know you got to run to the airport. I really appreciate you taking some time for us here today. No, you're welcome. Thanks again. It was great for John Herbin to grant us some time here this morning. He was really racing to get to the airport, so I do appreciate him uh, taking some time for us here on Real Like Radio. You know, one of the things that he talked about that really, really caught my attention was this concept. He just talked about it, the pit. And you really have to ask yourself, you know, are, how comfortable are you in, in what you're doing in your, in your farm business or your agribusiness, right? Are you, are you challenging yourself enough? Are you, are you kind of getting into that zone where you're really not comfortable? Because being comfortable creates a lot of, honestly, some, some poor habits 
right? You get sort of lazy. You, you start not paying attention to some of the details. Maybe it's the fact that you've had the same crop rotation all the time. You're marketing the same way. You you, you got to get out of that comfort zone. And that's, that's what that pit is all about. And he, he showed a graph in his presentation where it's basically like, you know, perform or competency, competency. And you got you to dip your competency down a little bit to really reach some of those higher levels, like a slingshot. You know, you, you put yourself into that pit where you're, you're dropping down into areas where maybe you're not as used to being. And uh, the long-term benefits are extremely high. So I thought that was a really, really cool concept that he shared here with the crowd. I would love to hear from you. Send me an email, shaney at realagriculture.com or on Twitter. The handle is at realagriculture. Or you can call the Real Ag Listener line, 855-776-6147. This is really one of the cool things about going to some of these conferences is getting a chance to interview people that are sort of, well, they're a little bit outside of our agricultural bubble. And whether you're coaching soccer or you're a leader of a Fortune 500 company or you're running a farm in Canada, these concepts are the same, right, from a leadership standpoint. So it was great to talk to John Herdman today, coach of the National Men's Soccer Team.